Well, sir, it's about 7.30 o'clock as we enter the small house halfway up in the next block now. And here in the living room, we find Mr. and Mrs. Victor Gook settling themselves for a quiet evening at home. Oh, young Rush Gook is present also, and his mother, who regards him with considerable severity, is saying... Did you hit him? Wasn't a very hard hit. But you did hit him. More of a shove than a blow. Your mother has warned you on several previous occasions to lay off nicer, hasn't she, Inkstain? He makes me so darn mad. Well, then why do you associate with him? Yeah, there's a good question. Listen, Willie, you've heard me talk about this a good many times already, so there isn't much use going all over it again. But I want you to quit fighting nicer Scott. I mean that now. Kid squabbles makes parents squabbles. There's nothing I hate worse than being on the house with my next-door neighbors. You've been told and told and told about quarreling with Nicer. When's that finally going to penetrate into your head? I don't start the quarrels. Well, you're always the one that does the hitting. Sure, because Nicer goes me to the point where flesh and blood can no longer oh, stand in. Oh, what you do? Flesh and blood, my foot. Well, what do you let yourself be goaded for, Thumbtack? Nicer knows he can get your goat. He teases you for fun. The thing to do is to laugh at him. The other day, you were all upset because Mildred Tisdall teased you. Holy smoke, you're not any infant. No, and as far as that goes, you tease kids yourself when you get a chance. Who? Yesterday afternoon, out in the backyard, I heard you picking on Leroy Snow, joshing him about having a girl. Kept it up for a long time. I had my pantry window open and heard every word. Leroy didn't get mad and want to fight. He was as good-natured as could be. That's altogether different, Mom. Why? Because it is. Sure, I was Josh and Leroy, but I was only doing it for amusement. No, nicer Joshes you for amusement. He joshes me for his own amusement. When I Josh Leroy, I do it for my amusement and his amusement, too. We both enjoy ourselves. But when nicer joshes me, he does it... Maliciously. Exactly, Gov. He does it maliciously. He knows he can make me squirm with rage, so he goads me and goads me and goads me till human flesh well, and blood... what do you associate with him for? How can I avoid associating with him? Son of a gun lives right next door. Oh, fiddle. You got other friends. There's Heine Call across the street. Leland Richards around the corner. Bluetooth Johnson only three blocks away. You wouldn't have to spend five seconds in Nicer's company. Yeah? Well, listen to what happened this evening. I don't care what happened this evening. You've been told to leave Nicer alone, and you haven't done it. Well, the next time you been hit the Been told to leave I'm... Nicer alone. What a mockery. Crime and he's sakes, why don't he leave me alone? I'm tired talking about it, Rush. God, will you listen to what happened this evening? I generally charge a small fee for listening. Shall we say a uh, dollar and a quarter? I want to just show you how these fights ain't my fault. Mm. Tonight after supper, I went outdoors and sat on the back porch steps. I had needle and thread and was busy sewing up a rip in my first basement's glove. I was on my own premises. I was bothering nobody. I was minding my own business. Well... Pretty soon, who should stroll over but nicer Scott? Well, you might have known in advance there'd be a quarrel and come in the house. Mom, that is ridiculous. All right, it's ridiculous. But I'm saying this one more one more time, and I mean it. The next time you... Civilization can have sunk so low that a common, ordinary American citizen has to leave his own back porch steps simply because some baboon like nicer Scott comes along. I've said all I have to say on the subject. Will you listen to the rest, Cub? Shoot. Nicer seated himself on the bottom step and... We chatted a few minutes. That's the way these fights always start. We chat along like axle grease and peach butter for a while. Everything is easy and comfortable. And pretty soon, that egg-headed ox drops a bombshell. <laughs> Comes out with something human flesh cannot stand. What did you come out with tonight? Well, we were discussing baseball. I passed your mark. I read in the paper where some big league team had three players from Cuba on it. I read in the paper where some big league team's got three players from Cuba on it, nicer, I says. Well, very casual and pleasant, he says. That's very interesting. It's especially interesting to me. Why, I says. And I knew at that very moment he was getting ready to let loose with some. Why, I says. Because, he says, I happen to have quite a bit of Cuban blood in my veins myself. Oh, sure. I happen to have quite a bit of Cuban blood in my veins myself. So just on account of a little measly nothing like that, you up and pasted them, huh? No. I laughed. Ha, 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 nicer. Okay, nicer, I says. No, that's a fact, he says. 
I've not only got considerable Cuban blood in my veins, but I also got considerable Eskimo blood in my veins. Oh, Lance. <laughs> preposterous, huh? So preposterous, I should think you'd be ashamed to let yourself get upset. Wait now, Ma. I want you to understand just how the conversation proceeded. Okay, nicer, I says. You're part Eskimo and you're part Cuban. I suggest we change the subject. Mm. Well said. Sure. I appreciated he was out to get my goat, and I was trying to head him off. Okay, nicer, I says. You're part Eskimo and you're part Cuban. That's peachy. I suggest we change the subject. Mm. But he won't change the subject. Keeps on with it. You know how much Cuban blood I got in my veins, he says? No, I says. Three gallons, he says. Okay, I says, but I'm already beginning to bite my lip. You know how much Eskimo blood I got in my veins, he says? I got a quart and a half Eskimo blood in my veins. You take Scotch-Irish blood, though. I got six gallons of Scotch-Irish blood in my veins. Also, I got a pint of French blood in my veins and two teacups full of Greek blood in my veins. Oh, my. Well, I've stood about all I can stand, so I blurred out, there ain't that much blood in a human body, I says. There's that much human blood in, blood in my body, he says. And then we argue hot and heavy. Till finally you smash him in the nose, huh? Till finally I smash him in the nose. Well, all I got to say we is... We dropped the subject of human blood and got on the subject of human hair. Gov. <laughs> Nicer Scott made the statement this evening. He knows how many hairs there are on his head. Really? How many, many has he got? got? 1,206. I got high food or food? People have got millions of hairs on their head. Well, maybe not millions. Well, maybe not millions. Hundreds of thousands, though, anyway. 1,206. Well, that's ridiculous. Why, guys like the Brickmush man that are almost bald have got more than that. Well, it seems to me... You're... Anyway, how could anybody count them? Be impossible. When I sat out there in the bottom back porch step and made that statement just as cool and comfortable as a horse. Well, you writhed with fury. Uh... Well, I writhed with fury. He went on to give me that old stuff about how he's never looked at himself in the looking glass. He's worked me up to horrible rages with that one before. Went on to give me the old stuff about he's got 87 pairs of pants in a cold storage vault in Burlington, Iowa. It's familiar, baby. I'll say. Well, maybe he has got 87 pairs of pants in cold storage in Burlington. Do you think he has? <laughs> no. All right, then. He said he could eat two whole watermelons by himself. Said he'd done it. He said he used to could chin himself 35 times but sprained a ligament and had to quit. He said he once owned a live Mohawk Indian and kept him in a cage. He said on one occasion he slept 26 hours at a stretch. Who, the Indian? No, nicer. He says, one time back in Burlington, I went to bed at 9 o'clock one night and never got up for 26 hours. What'd you do for food and drink, I says. Never done nothing, he says. I went without food and drink. Human body couldn't do it, I says. My human body can do it, he says. <laughs> Begin to get the idea now how I get whipped up into an uncontrollable fury? I get the idea, but I hardly sympathize with it. I give the guy warning. Like tonight. Nicer, I says. I've come to the end of my rope. The next crack you make, I'm going to pace you one upside the snoot. He made a crack? He made a crack. What was it? Back in Burlington, Iowa, I used to be able to stick out my tongue and touch my ear. Well, that's just a joke. It is not a joke. Sure, it's a joke. You're supposed to walk up to somebody and say, you bet you can stick out your tongue and touch your ear. And they'll say you're crazy. Then you stick out your tongue and touch your ear with your finger. I'm very familiar with the joke, man. In fact, I pull it on thousands of human beings during the course of my career. But nice, you never meant it as a joke. Back in Berlin, he says, I used to be able to stick out my tongue and touch my ear with it. I rose to my feet. Okay, nicer, I says. You asked for it. And then you hauled off? And then I hauled off. Pasted him one upside the snoot, then. Pasted him one upside the snoot. Did he cry? Never actually cried. Just jumped up and down and called me names and hollered how he was going to summon the police and have me thrown in prison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he went home? Then he went home. I felt bad about it. I knew I'd get balled out by you people. Well, it won't happen again, will it? I don't know, Mom. What do you mean you don't know? After all, I'm only flesh and blood. Well, look, Willie, try not to let it happen again. Okay, I'll try. Sure. I'll try my darndest. You're a pretty good boy. Mm. How about a hand or two of rummy peanut butter? Fine, fine. Fish the cars out of the library table, Roy. 
which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up the next block.